Good evening and welcome to another edition of King's Promotions Boxing. I'm Mark Adams. Join me and my broadcast partner, Rich Quinones, as we have a great night of championship boxing, all culminating with the Pennsylvania State Junior Middleweight Championship featuring former two-time world champion Kermit Cintrone and knockout artist, the explosive Tyrone Brunson. We'll be back with our first bout just after these messages. <laughs> Get set for Rafael Valencia, nickname El Toro, black trunks, silver trim against Brandon Robinson, the native of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Solid silver trunks comes in with a 3-1 mark. Two knockouts, Rich Quinones, Mark Abram slated for four middleweights. Valencia, 3-7-1 with two knockouts from Medford, Oregon. Valencia is a t another tough guy. Uh, though, despite the record, he's 3 7 1. He's never been stopped. He's fought some good competition. So uh, Robinson will have his work cut out for him. He's 2 and 1. Come off a second round knockout over Philip McGrain back in May. Valencia 3 7 and 1. Two knockouts. He's a. Uh, He's lost three in a row in five of his last six. It's actually, 0 5 and one hasn't won since uh, so, uh, January of 2016. So he's itching to get back in the in the uh, win column. He's got a draw and a split decision loss. A split decision was his last fight against an undefeated guy uh, named uh, Jahuta back uh, on May 20th. So he, he's itching to get back in the win column as well. Say it for four rounds. Interesting uh, trunks by Robinson. Typically when they're tapered off, cut pretty low. Got the fur. Good 
Good body shot by Robinson. He's thinking about doubling him up on that jab, closing it on one of the books. Combination again downstairs by Robinson. Working the body early on in this one. Robinson, a fan favorite around here. He's a pretty good ticket seller. So certainly a feeling out process as we close in on one of the books. Not a lot of action. Certainly Robinson able to land here and there. Valencia coming in with the right hand. Valencia says Nervin stop. As we close in on one of the books, another stack card this evening. Gorgeous summer night here inside the 2300 Arena, South Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Keep it locked in. Don't forget our night will be culminated with our main event. Kermit Citron taking on Tyrone Brunson for the PA State, Pennsylvania State Junior Middleweight title, perhaps a ranking inside the top 15. And of course, for the 17-year vet, Kermit Citron, and I really think for Brunson as well, we, we like to throw that cliche in boxing, the crossroads fight. But the loser of tonight's fight is gonna have, they're gonna be very hard pressed, have a hard time to actually get themselves back into the spotlight for an opportunity for bigger fights. You know, long way back for the loser of the fight. And the winner, the winner will probably very possibly get a world ranking. But what's most important, they'll be in line to, to, to get something of significance, a, a, a major like television bout against a highly ranked contender, or, you know. And that's the pathway to, to fighting and eventually winning a world championship. And especially for a fighter, the 37-year-old, Kermit Citron defended his IBF World Welterweight title several times, then lost it eventually to Antonio Margarito back in 2008. But in his heyday, always that fringe contender, title contender, and a former champ. And then you look conversely at Brunson, the 32-year-old, and we'll talk more about this as the night progresses. Perhaps a win would be a career-defining fight for him. Absolutely. And uh, Robinson's starting to turn it up here in round two. Yes, he is. Robinson in the silver trunks. Valencia, as Mark mentioned early on, 3-7-1. and one, Tough opponent out of Medford, Oregon. Solid black trunks. Silver trim. Robinson, good combination up top, working the body now. Taking over round number two, slated for four. Robinson's got a uh, one-inch height advantage, but uh, about an inch and a half reach disadvantage. Comes in in very good shape, does Brandon Robinson. You'd like to see with a fighter that has that soft middle like Valencia Robinson start to work it, exploit it a little bit. We should be doing that since the beginning of the fight. Now he's starting to really go to the body here in round two. Valencia was trying to stab out with that left jab. Another body shot by Robinson. Clark's gonna warn him to raise it up. My view was obstructed. I couldn't see if that was a low blow or not, or if it was borderline. In any event, Valencia will get much needed breather and rest. Well, for Robinson's sake, let's hope it doesn't dissuade him now from going uh, to the body. See how he reacts. He was warned the first time. 
Clark giving Valencia the allotted time. And why not take advantage of it? You haven't been able to put any type of combinations together, but you bring up an excellent point. We'll see if Robinson is moved by that at all, or if he continues to just try to build a little equity and work the body. Valencia is uh, he's trying to go to the body. Good shot. Another combination. Good left hook downstairs by Robinson. Hurt Valencia with that shot. Backing him up now. Valencia's got a definitely has a good beer. Straight right by Robinson. No! Oh my goodness! Caught him with a left coming in. Gorgeous shot. And this fight's over. And that is it. Finishing touches by Brandon Robinson. The stoppage in round number two against Rafael Valencia. We'll step aside. We'll have the official time of the stoppage. More boxing to come inside the 2300.
fight slated for six rounds. It'll be Victor Vasquez taking on Anthony Bergen, super lightweight. Rich Canoon is alongside Mark Abrams. Vasquez out of Yonkers, New York. 21-year-old sports to 7-3. Mark Bergen, the Philadelphia native, 10-3, several knockouts. He'll be down in the white trunks. And, of course, Vasquez, black trunks. Both guys want to get back into the win column. Uh, Bergen coming off a split decision, eight-round split decision loss right here to Avery Sparrow. That was back on March 10th. Vasquez coming off a first round, excuse me, a second round stoppage defeat to the hands of uh, Fazlidin Gabby Zarinov, who was it, very interesting. He actually dropped the 2016 Olympic gold medal winner in the first round of his pro debut uh, back on April 22nd, only to get stopped a round later. But Vasquez is a highly capable fighter who uh, has got some quality wins. He's got, he's got a win over Jerome yep. Conquest. Sophia Jahid Wise, who's three and one at the time. Two and zero. Bien Bien Benito Diaz. Nickname El Flaco, 21 year old, 5'10, slight advantage over the 5'9 Bergen. Bergen uh, competed in the National Golden Gloves tournament, you know, handful of times. I believe it was four times. Body shots by Vasquez has Bergen doubling over already. Bergen's come in dropping three of five. Had a tough loss to Avery Sparrow. Tough loss to Avery Sparrow. Tough loss to eight no Devontae Jones to fight Connecticut to fight that was at. He actually, I thought he won the fight and a uh, little home cooking uh, may have happened. Actually, actually, Devontae Jones, I believe is from Atlanta, but uh, he was uh, considered uh, the fighter of choice up there. So, um, I thought Bergen won that fight. And they were stopped in five by 10 0 1 Amos Cower. And that fight uh, took a lot of body punches that night. That was his first KO, KO loss of his career. Only KO loss, yeah. yeah. Back in 2015. So, as again, as we get ready to close in on one in the books, Slater for six. Co feature, which will lead us into our main event, Slater for 10 rounds for the PA State Junior Middleweight Championship. Vasquez is only losses to the Will Madera stopped in one. Will Madera is a kid who I've seen up in Canada over the last uh, four, three, four months. And that kid's a real good fighter, quick hand fighter. Carlos Rosario, who we've seen many times, and uh, the loss to, to the, the Olympic uh, gold medal winner we've just mentioned. Both guys who start out as uh, Orthodox fighters turn southpaw for a minute. Vasquez doing a good job sitting on his punches in round number one. So one of the books, we will keep it right here. So you look at Bergen, he's 25 years of age and he's had 13 pro fights, a couple knockouts, uh, knockout wins. He's dropped three of five, but you look at him, because of where he's at, at his age, Mark, I'm just wondering, forget about tonight. I mean, obviously he wants to get past Vasquez, but do you get the sense that there's some urgency with him to get more fights in a calendar year to be more active? He's not so much more active. He needs to, to, to win. You know, he needs to win because when you start losing fights, he's already 10-3. and three. You don't want to go to 10-4 and four because you start getting into uh, you, st you start getting your mail in a dress as a fighter you don't want to be, be in that's called opponentville and uh, him as a Philadelphian he doesn't want to lose to a kid from Yonkers New York in his own backyard if that's the case he would have dropped 4 out of 5 pardon me 4 out of 6 if that's the case but again yet to be seen Early stages, round number two, slated for six. Uh, I really haven't met too many people. There may be some nice houses there, because there are some opponents who get paid some good money, but you don't really want to be a resident of Opponentville. No, I hear that's a small population. <laughs> You're absolutely correct. <laughs> but it's Vasquez now. Seems as though fighting with a little more aggressive, aggressiveness the, the and urgency. Sledding, the sledding, it's really tough trying to get to where you want to be. Uh, sure, because you know, that can quickly turn to 10 and 7, 10, 10 and 8. Yep. And then people would deem you as a, quote, club fighter. 
This is a must win for both guys. Vasquez comes in 21 years of age, Bergen 25. I've known Bergen uh, probably for about eight, nine years, and he's got a lot of skill. Good left to the body from Vasquez. It's Vasquez, though, pressing the action in round number two, pushing back Bergen momentarily against the ropes. Bergen slipping that jab out there. Little range fighter trying to keep some distance. Not a lot of knockout power between the two. Good body shots by Vasquez. Three knockouts in his career. Bergen just two. Straight left from Vasco. Vasco's really starting to turn it up now. Yeah. Sitting on his punches, really finishing him off a little bit. Did, did something from the southpaw stance. Good body shot from Bergen. Straight right by Bergen. Not a lot of damage on that punch, though. Good round number two for Vasquez. Estevez will break him apart. You can tell Vasquez is a grinder. He wants to build a little equity with those body shots. Just saw it right there. Really likes to go down to the body. Best way to slow the opponent down. Oh! Rock Bergen back with an uppercut. Oh! Bergen to Germany goes down! Goes down late in round number two. His accumulation of those body shots as he beats the count and lives to fight another day. Gets out of round number two, not before being dropped. He's a little dazed, Mark. Now, look, Chino Rivas can't keep the, the calm corner that he normally keeps because he has to kind of uh, get into the face now of Anthony Bergen to uh, try to incite him because like you said, he walked back that corner pretty pretty foggy. There's accumulation of body shots, and you saw Vasquez finding a home for those body shots in round number two. Really did some serious damage, and those right uppercuts, couple uppercuts here and there mixed in for good measure. Sent Bergen down on the canvas, and you brought up a great point. At 25 years of age, now the urgency, that light bulb has to go off. You have to finish this fight. You can't get knocked down again. You can't lose this fight because it could sidetrack your career. That 10 and 3 can quickly become 10 and 8, 10 and 9, 10 and 10. See how he responds in round number 3. See if Vasquez goes right after Bergen. Yeah, it's those body shots. Once he starts to drop his guard and Bergen's singing about those body shots, that's when Vasquez comes back up top. Good exchange. And that was uh, the downfall in the coward stoppage loss. Body shots. Extremely susceptible to body shots. Now, he's, now what he has to do though is find a way to get back on that stick. Another body shot by Vasquez. Just measuring up, up top. Estevez watching the action closely. Bergen's got to throw back. Bergen trying to hold on. I don't think his legs are that steady either. Not on steady ground. Vasquez's corner imploring him to keep working the body. Vasquez still going forward, cutting off the ring. Has Bergen in trouble, has him thinking, has him backpedaling. Bergen does not want to get up against the ropes. One day, one day, one day. One 
Bergman's going to be able to do something to keep Vasquez off. Because even though Vasquez ha hasn't landed much of of note really in this second round, in this third round, he's been on top of Bergman. That jab pre prevents him from coming in though. That defense got to set up your offense. He's going away. He's just backpedaling. He's not even throwing. And a left to the body from Bergen. And that's what he needs to do. Stop him in his tracks. Body shot by Vasquez. Vasquez starting to take over this fight now. Yeah, that was a hard left. Another left. Pushed him back against the ropes. Bergen in trouble. Does not want to get up against the ropes. Benji Estevez will break him apart. Lay stages round number three. Slated for six. Good uppercut by Bergen. Got out of round number two. Trying to survive round number three. Body shots by Vasquez. Bergen didn't win the round, but he survived it. Good round for the 21-year-old Victor Vasquez. All right, we'll step aside. Round number four when we return inside the 2300 Arena from South Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We welcome you back inside the 2300 Arena, South Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, special night of championship boxing. Brought to you by King's Promotions, another stack card. It's been extremely competitive throughout. Alongside Mark Abrams, I'm Rich Quinones. Exciting bout. Our co-feature of the evening, super lightweights, Victor Vasquez dropping Philadelphia's Anthony Bergen in round number three. Bergen surviving in round number four. Vasquez into black trunks, Bergen into white. Bergen coming out with two nice left hooks to start the round. Good counter right. And Ooh, left. Caught Vasquez too with that counter left. One of his best shots of the night. See if he can regroup. Survive round number three. See if he can bridge it to some success in round number four. Good right hand from Bergen. Just a little short, but he's showing some signs of life here in round four. Certainly fighting a smarter fight. A little more cautious, too. Body shot by Bergen. Up top, good right uppercut by Bergen. First time in the night, he's got Vasquez up against the ropes. Left uppercut by Bergen again. Body shots by Vasquez. Those body shots just slow you down. Vasquez says, come on, let's go, Vamanos. Well, Bergen sitting in the middle of the ring. And, uh, he's going to sit there, Bergen's going to sit there, and Vasquez is sit there and say, we're doing our pizza. But now they're back at it. Good work digging to the body by Vasquez. Now it's Bergen digging to the body. Vasquez on the attack. Back and forth. Bergen trying to work the body now, trying to spin Vasquez around. They'll get broken apart momentarily. They'll meet back in the center of the ring. Left uppercut by Bergen. Can't slip through the guard. Doubled up by Vasquez up top with the left. Let's go. 
Very interesting fight. Very interesting round number five, too. Different pace for Bergen, but yet Vasquez, his pace really hasn't stopped. Throwing a lot of punches in this one. Good work rate. Oh, good combination. Both of them fighting in a foul boat. And a little extracurricular activities as we close in on five in the books. Six and final round between Vasquez and Bergen. Vasquez in the black. Bergen in the white. Pardon me. Beginning stages of the fifth round between Vasquez and Bergen. Slated for six. Yeah, these rounds are flying by, Rich, so I, I can see how you could... Uh, well, the action is heating up the last several rounds, Absolutely. so... And the lights, lights are a little bright for me down here as well. So Bergen actually scored the knockdown early on in the fight. Absorbed the knockdown early on. Was able to survive. Vasquez dealt with a good round number four. How did you score that round number four? I thought Bergen had a good start of the round, but Vasquez late with those flashy combinations. He may have pulled that one out. Short combination by Bergen. Bergen uh, coming out even better this round. I give a lot of credit to Anthony Bergen. Took the shots early on, absorbed the knockdown, took a lot of body shots, but he's fighting. Showing a lot of heart. Looks like there's a little cut right on the bottom lip of Victor Vasquez. Good right from Good Bergen. right hand by Bergen. Yeah. Vasquez shakes his head no. Another right by Bergen, then a left up top. Probably Anthony Bergen's best round of the night thus far. By far. But here, he's now he's starting to lose that momentum. He built up a lot of good momentum here. And now he's letting Vasquez inch back into the round. But at this point, Bergen needs more than just winning rounds. He needs uh, some knockdowns and uh, I or a knockout. Yeah, he's way behind on my card. Almost got caught again, pushed back with that left, but you saw him a little off balance. Ooh, good counter again, though. Vasquez coming straight forward, walking through some of those punches. So now it's five in the books. We'll step aside, we'll get set for round number six. More boxing right after this. inside the 2300 arena this is the sixth and final round our special co-feature of the evening 
Battle of super lightweights. Victor Vasquez out of Yonkers, New York, 7-3 against the Philadelphia native Anthony Bergen in the white trunks. 10-3, Bergen absorbed the third round knockdown, survived round number four, fought valiantly in round number five, but it's been Vasquez who's been pressing the action, landing at will. Vasquez is fighting like he's the guy who's behind. That was a big well. Oh, good uppercut. A, actually, the nose of Vasquez is starting to leak blood. Bergen waking up over the last several years. And the last several rounds as well. Needs this fight, as Mark alluded to. He's dropped three out of five. Has to pull a rabbit out of the hat. Has to score a knockout. Vasquez corner imploring with him to move forward. Go to the body. Keep working the body. Those body shots set up that knockdown in round number three. Good uppercut again by Bergen. Combination up top again by the Yonkers native. Vasquez isn't leaving anything to the judges. He wants to really make a statement. He knows he's fighting in Bergen's hometown. And that's why he's going forward, trying to finish off the fight in style. See if he works the body a little more. Bergen catches him up top though. Counter of his own. I have him way ahead, so. But, that, but you brought up a good point. Some of the scoring's been a little skewed tonight. I was going to say, my scorecard and a bag of chips give you just a bag of chips, so. Vasquez not leaving anything to chance. He's back in Bergen up now on the ropes. Gives himself a little bit of the distance. Now it's Bergen with a low shot, just caught with a belt line. Couldn't get anything on that right uppercut. The idea was there. Body shots again, doubled up, did Vasquez. <laughs> Uppercut by Bergen. Final 10. Good effort by both guys, but Victor Vasquez, the better man tonight. It'll go to the scorecards. We'll have that decision when we return. More boxing inside the 2300 arena right after this.
by Jones. Both these two fighters, solid hand speed. And now they're starting to sit on their punches a little bit. I think Jones knows to a man, he's got to make it somewhat of an ugly fight. Try to get under the skin of Ortiz a little bit. All right, we talked about Ortiz through two. As we take a look at Jones in round number three, what adjustments does he have to make or what does he need to keep doing? Any adjustments you like to see Jones make? Yeah, I mean, he's got to be a little bit more aggressive. I know he's, he's sitting on the counters in a couple little instances that he's had success in this fight, been off of counters. Let's see what happens if he tries to take it to uh, Steven Ortiz. See, he's just sitting there waiting for Ortiz to punch. Is he respecting his power a little too much? Very possible. But he's also probably a natural counter puncher. right again that was the shot he was waiting for showed a lot of patience in there and that's probably one of the reasons that Jones didn't want to engage solid shot see if Ortiz goes right after him now works the body a little bit now he sets him up up top Sean Clark watching the action closely See the patience of the young fighter. See if he picks and chooses his shots now. His arsenal, his array of punches. If anything, Jones now has to respect that right hand. Jones, uh, he tried to land a counter. Late body shot by Ortiz for good measure right around the belt line. So good action in round number three. We'll step aside as we've got three in the books. We'll get set for round number four. So we'll see how Jones responds in round number four after suffering that knockdown late in round number three. Jones in the red trunks, Ortiz in the black trunks. 23-year-old now going for broke early on in round number four, measuring his shots with that left and a straight right, pushing back Jones against the ropes, working the body a little bit, eyeing him up, misses with that uppercut. Jones would be wise to get off the ropes. Body shot again by Ortiz, just measuring up the shots. Good job by Jones. Yeah, and I saw Ortiz flash over to his corner and that's when he got caught. Body shot again by Jones. Good combination by Ortiz on the counter and again he's gonna be warm. Uh, and th that was legit, he hit him right on the thigh. Sean that was Clark. definitely a low blow. And I think he might have gotten away with it in closing round number three. So it's possibly for what was missed, but as you alluded to, he had a better vantage point than I did. Now he's got to be careful here because, ooh, good combination up top by Jones. He catches again, he could get a point deducted. Body shot again by Jones. Starting to pick up the pace in round number four. Right in a combination from Jones. Actually, really picking up here, Rich. Absolutely, in round number four. Both these fighters throwing and landing, throwing with bad intentions and landing. Body shot by Ortiz. Caught Jones walking in. 
Another body shot. Good counter up top by Jones now. See if Ortiz try to work in a right uppercut. It's good. This is good stuff from two unde young undefeated fighters. 29-year-old Jones, 4-0. 23-year-old Ortiz, 6-0. Straight right by Jones. Snaps back the head of Ortiz. Ooh, up top, double did Jones. Ortiz has to go back to the jab. He's stunned. Oh, goodness, and another counter check up. Oh, my goodness. Mercy, that could be the night for Tyrone Jones. Sean Clark giving him the count. It was a check hook. Great punch by Ortiz. Let's see if Ortiz goes right after Jones now. Second time he's put Jones down on the campus. Jones now coming forward. And it looked like well, right for the knockdown, it was Ortiz who was a little wobbled. Final 10 in round number four. Around that saw Jones again hit the canvas oh. and a good combination by Jones to close out the round and Ortiz is smiling. Great action here inside the 2300 arena, South Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Two knockdowns, one in the third, another in the fourth. Well, that was a terrific round both ways. Ortiz was wobbled and stunned at least twice, but he it, sandwiched it between that was the knockdown. That's a good work by Ortiz. Great action thus far, four in the books. We'll keep it here. Electric crowd inside the 2300 Arena. Special night of championship boxing brought to you by Kings Promotions. We still have our main event to come. Kermit Citron taking on Tyrone Brunson for the PA State Junior Middleweight title. Well, if anything, Tyrone Jones has come to fight. And Steven Ortiz, a lot of fanfare, a lot of family and friends in attendance this evening. Scored that knockdown in round number three with a short right, then a check right hook in round number four. But Jones, to his credit, got up, absorbed it, got out of the round, sets the stage up for what could be an explosive round number five. Oh, straight left by Jones. Just missed that shot. By Jones pushes back Ortiz good. uppercut by Jones it's good stuff Rich both of these fighters shown tremendous resolve and heart body shot by Ortiz digging deep A good left from Jones has hit Ortiz with some real solid left Yes, he hand. has. Yes, he has. But he's got to get that guard up for those counter rights by Ortiz. That's his power shot. Body shot by Ortiz. Trying to push that left jab through the guard. Eyeing up. Measuring up Jones. Great action throughout. And it's starting to heat up in round number five. Slated for six. Give me ten. And, and Jones has to know he's way behind in the cards now with the two knockdowns, so he's got to even be more aggressive now. Doubled up again. Did Jones went up top. Just soften up the body enough just to make Ortiz drop his guard a little bit. And then he's coming back up top. Good right by Ortiz. Close range, fighting in a phone booth. Body shots again by Ortiz. Just missed with that right uppercut. Not a lot on it. Jones is stalking. Ortiz, but he's not punching. He needs to punch. Like that. Double it up. Good combination by Jones. Trying to push through that guard. 
Not a lot on that right uppercut. Ortiz trying to come back, counter to the body a little bit. Setting up that sledgehammer of a right. Closing in on five in the books, final 10. They'll go to their respective corners for the sixth and final round. We'll step aside, more action to come right after this. Sixth and final round inside an electric 2300 arena. There's juice in the air in South Philadelphia. Not Highly not contest not contested not contest. I don't know why Ortiz is coming out south, Paul, now. I, don't know. I mean, you're pretty much up seven points in this fight. Uh, Steven Ortiz in the black trunks has uh, delivered two knockdowns in round three and four. Speared at round number five. Sets the stage up for what should be a scintillating round number six against a very game Tyrone Jones out of South Bend, Indiana, who also came in with an undefeated mark at 4-0. I'm not sure either why he started off South Paul, Mark. That's a good point. No, I mean, Stick with what's, what, what's got you there. He only did it for about 15 seconds. Yeah, but still, I don't know if he might... Yeah. In a fight like this, though, where either fighter can get exposed in a second. Exactly. Straight right by Jones. A body shot from Tyrone Jones. Body shots by Ortiz up back up top. Now they're exchanging, they're letting their hands go. A lot of punches thrown in this fight. I think Jones has to go for broke, though. He has to understand he needs a knockout to win this thing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Either that or about eight knockdowns in this round. Because I have Ortiz winning every round plus the two knockdowns. Good right hand by Ortiz. Ortiz is a real sharp puncher. Oh, good counter left, though, by Jones. Both these two can not only deliver, but they can take tough, tough chins. Jones is saying no, but he should be trying to, to do something special here instead of telling Ortiz his punches aren't hurting. Yeah, that's an excellent point. He's got to generate some type of offense. I mean, this is late in round number six. This is his last gas, his last round. Soft left by Ortiz, just to keep him off balance. Trying to push through that guard. But he does get caught once in a while, though. Good straight right, though. Yeah, Missed wild with a right. I'm sure he'll work on that defense going forward. As this one will go to the judges scorecards, but a very entertaining six round affair very. between Steven Ortiz and Tyrone Jones. Two knockdowns scored by Ortiz. We'll have the official decision. We'll start
Back inside the 2300 Arena as we get set to close out a great night of boxing presented by King's Promotions, our main event. We are set to go. It'll be slated for 10 rounds for the PA State Junior Middleweight Championship. Kermit Citron, the veteran, the former world champ, will take on Tyrone Brunson for the final introductions this evening. Back up top to our ring announcer, Alex Barbosa. So as we get set to close out a great night of boxing, again, it'll be slated for 10 rounds, a junior middleweight, PA State Championship, PA State title. Kermit Citron taking on Tyrone Brunson. Rich Canoon is alongside Mark Abrams, and this is a crossroads fight. Brunson in the gray and yellow trunks, and of course, uh, Kermit in the uh, very familiar colors of uh, Puerto Rico, of course. Slated for 10, Mark, your initial thoughts on this one? Well, it, it, I don't know if crosswords is the right word, but it's a desperation fight for either man. Whoever wins this is going to win this Pennsylvania State title, but more importantly, be in line to fight a, you know, a, a bigger fight. Well, and I think in crossroads terms, I look at it as a crossroads terms because you already have a fighter who's a 37-year-old, a 17-year vet in, in, in Citron who's been there before, but he wants to reestablish himself and get into title contention. Brunson's 32, so again, he doesn't have a lot of margin of error as well. Well, I, I, in, in the grand scheme of things, I don't know if Citron does. He's coming off a disappointing draw to David yes. Grayton uh, back on March uh, March 17th in Reading. And, uh, you know, after some of the layoffs or whatever, yeah, 
Cintron has been, uh, for lack of a better term, some of the, the, the boxing public, you know, they, they say he's still fighting. You know, they ask you, he's still fighting. But when you get inside the numbers, he hasn't lost in six years. Right. So as a two-time former world champ, as we alluded to, three and three in world title fights, but 37 years of age. So do you want to remain relevant or get back to being relevant well, that, really that, is the question. That, that's what this boils down to. For Brunson, he had some notoriety because he scored the 19 straight first round yep. knockouts to start his career. But, uh, you know, a lot of people thought that was fool's gold for him. He, you know, when he stepped up, the results haven't been uh, too great for him. Now a win over Cintron. He just had a nice win over Brandon Quarles on March 11th. So now a win over Cintron get put, gives him two decent wins with guys with decent records. So he becomes relevant again as well. And he's fought some stiff opponents as well. DeCarlo Perez, Tony Harrison, who just fought for the IBF Super Waterweight title. Um, you know, both of these fighters, obviously, uh, Kermit with the more impressive uh, resume, if you will, over the course of a career. Solid career. I mean, you can't argue with the fact that someone has won several world titles. Yeah, He's held the belt for several a times. A terrific career, considering he was he was a wrestler in high school. And fought the likes of Canelo Alvarez, Paulie Williams, Antonio Margarito, defending his IBF World Waterweight title. Martinez. Carlos Molina. Absolutely. Back to the jet. Now, now. Body shots by Citron. What we saw out of Bryson in his fight with Quarles is more of a guy. Oh, there's a there's a shot that that got through. Brunson boxed pretty well against Quarles. Been a good first round so far for Citron. Yeah, it was probably his best win to date against Quarles, as you mentioned. But uh, exceptionally uh, exceptional first round for Kermit Citron. Comes in 39, five and three, 30 knockouts in his career. Brunson knockout power as well. 24, six and two with 22 knockouts. Well, you mentioned that it helps that stretch to start his career. 19, uh, 19 and 0, all coming in the first round. Well, Cintron has always been known as a vicious punch. Yep. He's always, uh, he's always had that. But go back to the Grayton fight. A lot of people thought he technically, he was dropped in the fifth round in that one, flash knockdown, but a lot of people thought he should have lost that fight by TKO, and he almost sold it to the referee where he couldn't continue. And I think a lot of people, to be fair, objectively, they kind of question the heart and desire. Do you want to continue? Not in the fight, but as a fighter. So I think he can answer some of those questions tonight. Absolutely, and he needs to win more than anything else. So again, this is slated for 10 rounds. And a win would be big for one of these fighters with the the thought that you could possibly jet into yourself into the top 15 in the world rankings, but be that as it may, first things first. They gotta get through each other tonight. Brunson taking an extra second or two to regroup. Good round for Kermit Citron. So we get set, opening stages round number two, again slated for 10, Mark Abrams. I'm Rich Quinones, cap off great night of boxing here, presented by King's Promotions. Good crowd this evening, 2300 Arena, South Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Doubled up, good left hook by Kermit Citron. Pushed back, Brunson. In this, in this comeback of uh, Citron, which has been about 13 months or so, First four minutes of his fight, he, he's looked as good as he has you know, in those bouts, which is now the sixth bout. Well, remember, after the Canelo loss in 2011, he had two years away, fought once in 2014, defeated Ronald Cruz, no activity in 2015. I don't care if you're 20, if you're 30, if you're 35, you have to be active. <laughs> Absolutely. Then, uh, you know, maybe it was a time for Kermit to reevaluate everything. He's back with uh, Joe Pastore, who's been in his camp and his life for a long time. Joe and Marshall Kaufman, who's now his promoter, um, were the ones who led him to the world title. Of course, held the IBF World Waterweight Championship. 2006, 2008. Certainly a mainstay, not only uh, nationally, internationally, and on the local boxing scene. Oh, good combination though by Brunson. And he rocks Citron right there though. Oh my goodness, what a turn of events in this second round. 
Brunson just rocks it, trying back. That was a tremendous left hook. 22 knockouts in his career, straight right by Brunson. It's amazing the way boxing is. One minute, Cintron was looking real good here. Another he's right. To, he's got to hit hard with a couple shots now. Staggered Kermit Citron in round number two. See if Citron goes back to the jab a little bit just to slow down. Tyrone Brunson, 32 year old out of North Philly. Ton of confidence right now. Body shot. So after a very impressive opening round by Citron, it's Brunson that comes back in round number two and does most of the damage. Two in the books. We'll step aside. More championship boxing inside the 23 inch arena. Right after this. Get set for round number three of the slate of 10 round affair for the PA State Junior Middleweight title. Kermit Citron taking on Tyrone Brunson after a solid opening round by the veteran Citron. Brunson came back and nearly floored Kermit in round number two. Great combinations. Definitely rocked him and buckled him. See how Kermit reacts in round number three. Brunson feeling pretty confident right now. Brunson in the yellow and gray. Citron in the red, white, and blue trunks. Of course, Puerto Rican colors, the flag, if you will. Now let's see what Brunson. Uh Brunson's back like he was in round one. He's reaching a lot. Let's see if Sintron can capitalize on that. Like there. He caught Brunson reaching and countered with the right hand. Good counter shot by Sintron. Pay off dividends, keep this fight on the outside. Brunson, you almost ventured a guess, is going to try to come in on the inside. Citron's corner imploring him to double all with that left jab. Little more cautious approach by Brunson in round number three. My assumption was he was going to bridge some of that momentum into round number three. See Brunson jumping in with a body combination. Hey, showing the body shots too. Even if they don't do a lot of damage, at least it's making Citron at least for the moment drop his guard. When you start doing that, you're vulnerable up top. Cintron, you can tell he's loading up, though, for a right hand. Yeah, he's just doubling up. Even if he's just sticking the left there, there's nothing on it, but you're right. He's probably just cocking that hand back, hoping, hoping he can just get that right. But it's almost telegraphed, though, because Brunson knows it's coming. Good right to the body from Cintron. So three in the books. We'll step aside. More championship boxing right after this.
as we get set for round number four, Kermit Citron taking on Tyrone Brunson. Slated for 10 for the Pennsylvania State Junior Middleweight title. Decent bounce back round for Citron after being rocked in round two. Now Brunson is really coming out now looking for something big. And he landed short left and then a straight right. Good combination for Brunson. You can hear Citron's oh. corner telling him to keep your guard up, and right there, Brunson caught him with a straight right. Yeah, that was a good right hand. Just a little lax with his defense with that left hand. See how low his hand is? And it's not like Brunson's been working the body to make him think, let me drop the guard to protect. That's not been the case. Kermit's being a little last with his defense right now. Ooh! Doubled up with that. I believe it was a left hand mark. It was a... Sinchon walked right into a left hand. Round number four. A lot on the line for both these fighters, trying to stay relevant, perhaps reignite their careers. It's been very competitive so far through the first three plus rounds. Awkward slip. Citron landed awkwardly. Sean Clark will check both fighters, wipe down their gloves respectively. Action resumes. It looks like we got a little blood from the nose of Citron. Oh, good right. Oh, goodness! Counter left hook, check hook by Citron. Floor Tyrone Brunson. He's on wobbly ground right now. Sean Clark giving him the count. Is he about to be vic a knockout victim 31 in Citron's career? See if he ends it in round number four. Oh, oh and there's a left right there. Brunson goes down again for the second time in round number four. Kermit Citroen, turn it back the clock. Will there be a third knockdown? Will Clark let it get to that? Let's see if he can finish it. Kermit Citroen going in for the kill. Brunson gets out of the round. Big round for Kermit Citroen to say the least. Let's see if one minute will be enough for Tyrone Brunson to kind of gather himself to try to at least stay around. I mean, the good thing about being a 10 round fight, it, it could be, you know, Brunson could take a couple rounds to, to gather himself and get back in the fight. It's only, the, only going into round five. So this isn't the worst thing to, to happen to Tyrone Brunson. He just needs to, to gather himself and see what he can do for you know for the next uh, round or so, and then try to get back into the fight maybe in round six to the round five. As we get set for round number five, he was floored twice in round number four was the 32-year-old out of North Philly, Tyrone Brunson. The 37-year-old, two-time former world champ, Kermit, Kermit Citron though, scintillating, just breathtaking action in round number four. Lefts, bodies, straight rights. Oh, now it's Brunson though. Puts him off balance a little bit. Citron going in for the knockout, straight right. Brunson sticking his tongue out. Yeah, I don't know if he should be doing that after he got floored you know, pretty viciously twice about a minute and a half ago. A hard right from Straight right, oh! Goes and down goes Kermit Citron now! Oh my goodness, back and forth! He goes down for the first time this evening in round five. And all of a sudden, Tyrone Brunson has life! Well, I stand corrected. I said Brunson should just try to get... Oh! 
Oh, and a speed right again! Cedron goes down for the second time in round five. That might be it for him. That might be the night for Kermit Cedron. His heart's gonna get him back up. Tyrone Brunson is not clowning around now. We'll see if he goes in for the kill. Kermit's in trouble. Let's see if he can hold on now. Since Another right! Oh, and an up! And that's it! Sean Clark says it's over! Oh my goodness! Tyrone Brunson with an upset! Perhaps the biggest win of his career! He just claimed the PA State Junior Middleweight title! Oh my goodness mercy! What a win! Wow! Like I said, Brunson should just take a round to gather himself and maybe get back in the fight in the sixth round. <laughs> What an oh, was incredible that fight for five rounds. Citron floors Tyrone Brunson twice in round number four. And it's Brunson turning the tide on Kermit twice in round number five. And the final time, Sean Clark said, that's enough. We'll step aside while the official time of the stoppage right after this. We welcome you back inside an Electric 2300 Arena. A shocking turn of events as Tyrone Brunson was floored twice in round number four, came back and delivered two knockdowns against Kermit Citron. And of course, Sean Clark decided to stop the action. When it was all said and done, it was Brunson winning it. Let's get the official time of the stoppage for the final time this evening. Back up top to Alex Barbosa. It. Official time of the stoppage, 121 round number five for Tyrone Brunson. Perhaps, perhaps a start of many special things to come for this young man. The 32 year out of North Philly improves to 25, six and two. He also claims the PA State Junior Middleweight title. For Kermit Citron, the 37 year old, tough, tough loss. Floored Brunson early on in this one, and then it was Brunson coming back and flooring Citron twice. And then, of course, the stoppage in round number five, Sean Clark saw after that there was nothing more that needed to be done. He wisely stepped in, and he called a halt to the action. For Mark Abrams, I'm Rich Quinones. Hope you've been joining a special night of championship boxing presented by King's Promotions. And, of course, you can always visit us online. You can always check out King's Promotion and, of course, like him on Facebook for all the information of upcoming fights. Mark, before we get out, any closing thoughts? Still trying to digest that main event. Tyrone Brunson did, did. This is a career maker for him. So now he's.